So back to what I was saying. <laughs> Alrighty, hey, welcome everybody. This is Nick Reese, your COO and co-founder of AgentElite.com. So today was supposed to be a, a video that was uh, going to be done on our uh, episode uh, two for our lead management series, but I felt the need to just kind of take a step back um, since we're in the month of October. And as you guys all know, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And so I felt the need uh, to be able to take a step back and really kind of focus on this particular topic as it has hit close to home for not only uh, my family, but our family here at Age and Elite. And I'm sure and more positive that it's affected uh, the majority of you that are listening to this video. So today we have a special guest, Brandy. Welcome, Brandy. Nice to be here. Yes, and Brandy is one of our uh, customer uh, success coaches and has been with us for uh, how many years now? Two years. Two years, so two years and counting. And uh, one of the reasons why I wanted to bring her on is because uh, she's also been affected uh, by this. And, uh, you know, again, we just want to bring more awareness to the overall topic. So um, I couldn't find a pink button up. <laughs> But I do have my uh, pink bracelet. And um, so anyways, let, let's just talk a little bit about this breast cancer. Um, I'm pulling, I want to cover some of the statistics uh, that I pulled up online through breastcancer.org. Again, that's breastcancer.org. And uh, let's just talk a little bit about uh, some of these statistics because I, I find them uh, crazy, first off. And... Then I want to get into a little bit about just your overall testimonial and uh, some of the challenges that you've faced at the age of 26, right? Uh, because a lot of the statistics that I'm reading are really between the age of 40, 44, and uh, you know older. Uh, but at the same time, it's just not anything to mess with. So uh, this isn't a video that's going to be super politically correct, uh, and meaning um, I'm wearing a bracelet here that says cancer now they're probably going to go ahead and bleep that out which <laughs> is okay but at the end of the day you know cancer right i think that's one common thing or phrase that we can all agree on cancer sucks now here's some interesting facts uh that i pulled off um of this website about one in eight women in the u.s which is about 12 percent will develop an invasive breast cancer over the course of their lifetime. And in 2019, an estimated 268,000 new cases of invasive breast cancer are expected to be diagnosed in women uh, in the U.S., along with 63,000 uh, new cases of non-invasive breast cancer, which is crazy, right? Now, about 41,000 women in the U.S. are expected to die in 2019 from breast cancer and that is just ridiculous right now these death rates have been decreasing since 1989 and you know women under 50 uh, have experienced uh, a larger or experienced larger decreases and I, I think it has a result to do based on you know obviously treatment advances um, you know, earlier detection through screening and just more increased awareness, uh, which is one of the reasons why, you know, we're doing this video. Now, for women in the U.S., breast cancer death rates are higher than those of any other form of cancer besides lung cancer, which is interesting. Now, women under 45, breast cancer is more common right, in African-American women than white women. Now, overall, Af Amer African-American women uh, are more likely to actually die of breast cancer than, uh, than any, anyone else, which is crazy. You know, and for the Asians, Hispanics, Native American women, you know, the risk of developing and dying from breast cancer is a lot lower, uh, which is an interesting uh, statistic, right? Now, a women's risk of breast cancer nearly doubles if she has first like a first degree relative mother sister daughter in some cases father 
right? It doesn't just come from the mother's side, but who have been diagnosed with uh, breast cancer. And less than 15% of women who get breast cancer have a family member that is being diagnosed with it. Uh, just a couple more statistics here. About 5 to 10% of breast cancer can be linked uh, to a gene, right, inherited from one's mother or father. And um, I think, you know, it's called... It's going to be the BRCA1 and BRCA2. BRCA is BRCA, not BRCA. Yes, I don't know it's why very BRCA. But BRCA. BRCA1, <laughs> BRCA1 and BRCA2 genes. And, and these are some of the most common. Now, on average, women with BRCA1 have up to a 72% lifetime risk of actually developing breast cancer. And for women with BRCA2, the risk is about 69%. I mean, you know, 69, 72. The fact is, is it's high, right? Mm -hmm. It wouldn't matter if it's 25% you know, it's, it's still, it's still crappy, right? Um, you know, and, and, and breast cancer that is positive for BRCA1 and BRCA2 tends to develop more often in younger women, right? Than, than uh, non-invasive. Yes. Now, 85% of breast cancer occurs in women who have no family history of breast cancer at all. And that's ridiculous. I mean, those numbers, those numbers aren't good. No. Let's face it, right? You know, the it says here that the, the occurrence is due to just genetics um, that happen as a result of just, you know, overall aging process and life in general, rather than just these inherited type, you know, forms. So before we get really into your story, um, you know, the fact of the matter is, is, you know, we do a lot of research. There's a lot of awareness. Um, you know, but they, they're always talking about, you know, the ages of 40 to 44 um, should really have their choice to start. Um, but I would say, go get it started now. You know, I mean, why why even risk it with, with 80%, 60%, 72%? It's, that's a high percentage. It's a really high percentage and it's very easy to go and get screened. You can do it with whether you have insurance or not. So going to any doctor, if you want to get screened and you ask them, they are more than happy to help you. Um, asking a primary, you can ask the gynecologist, you can literally ask any doctor you go to and they will get you into a screening. And if you don't have insurance, they're more than happy to point you in the right direction. Um, there's tons of free clinics in every area. Planned Parenthood is the most common one. They will screen you and they will send you where you need to go if there is anything of concern. Yeah. And I think it's just, you know, it's, it's the awareness behind that, right? Because you know, insurance has always been a big debate in America, right? And whether we have insurance or don't have insurance, you know, when it comes to this stuff, it doesn't matter. And there's so many resources available for people that are not insured, right? So, you know, don't use that as an excuse not to go get checked uh, because your life is important. Like life matters in general, right? So one of the reasons why, you know, we're obviously talking about this is because it needs to be talked about. Um, Breast cancer is the second leading cause of cancer death in women, exceeded only by lung cancer, which is which is interesting because I haven't really heard too much about lung cancer, so I can't even imagine the statistics when it comes to that, right? But um, also, um, you know, we, me, myself, my wife's sister has been affected uh, by breast cancer and, and has ended up having a double mastectomy a little over a year ago, so she's been cancer-free. Uh, for a year, um, which is just amazing in itself, right? The uh, I, I just can't imagine just the daily battle, the daily struggle of of just knowing, you know, that it's really out of your control it, it, from one sense, but it's in it's in your control from an early sense, right? It's it's preventative if you're taking the necessary steps and precaution precautions to um, early diagnose, right? Uh, but we've also had, you know, within our family here at Agent Elite, you know, people that have been directly affected, including Brandy, but also several other employees and one who has lost his mother uh, within the past year. So it's something that, you know, really kind of hits home to us. And uh, it's something that we want to take a step back uh, to not focus on business, to not focus on anything but this, right? 2.8 million 2.8 million estimated amounts of, of breast cancer survivors in the U.S. And that's an incredible number. But that's still a very small percentage, you know, based on everything that, 
you know, has been going on, right? So one good statistic is breast cancer survivors have tripled over the past 60 years, right? And I think it has a lot to do with just overall awareness and things of that nature. But let's take a step back here for just one moment. And uh, let's talk a little bit about your story because you're 26 years old, right? Yep. <laughs> and they're telling us, hey, you know, around 40 to 44. Now, if you would have waited that long. I, I would probably honestly be dead or have terminal cancer. Yeah. That would be probably where it's at. So um, share with us just a little bit about your story and um, yeah, and let's just kind of go from there. Um, so last year I, I went in for testing. My family history is pretty, it's pretty cancer ridden. Um, my mom's been diagnosed three times between mm. the ages of about 30 to 42 uh, with breast mm. cancer. So we already were set for early screening as kids. Um, my older sister at 29 was diagnosed with breast cancer. Um, both of them triple negative, which is just a rare form of breast cancer. Um, so the screenings start 10 years prior to that when you base it off the age of when somebody has cancer. So originally it would have been 22, but my sister knocked it down to 19 for the whole family when she got diagnosed. Um, I'd already had a screening and a mammogram at age 20 and I was doing routine follow-ups because we are BRCA1 positive. We have that gene mutation okay. from our grandfather's side on my mom's side. So like, like you said earlier, it does come from both male and female. It's not just a female gene. Uh, men yes. can have it too. So just because your mom mm -hmm. didn't have it yes. doesn't mean that you don't have the gene itself. So yes. I think it's really important to bring more awareness to younger women just to go find out if you have the gene or not, because that will give you a better idea on how you really handle this going forward. Wouldn't you agree? Yes. So you can easily go and get tested. Um, there's genetic counselors. They're here to help. Um, so, you know, if you don't think it's going to be traumatic, but it will be traumatic getting a gene mutation test because you assume that you're going to be fine and you're not going to have anything wrong. But the likelihood, it's 50-50. You're either going to have a gene mutation or you're not. There's no in between. Um, luckily for us, 50% of our family was not positive. So my younger sister and my older brother are oh. lucky enough to just have normal testing. They don't need to be as... Okay responsive so they can go you know once a year once every two years to okay. test themselves as opposed to you know twice a year for the BRCA positive okay so so anyways you you know were doing your due diligence at a young age yes. right and taking the necessary steps and precautions and at one point you decide Yep, I went in and I uh, I got my double mastectomy. <laughs> so in June of last year, I left work for six to eight weeks. I have a lovely family here with Agent Elite. Um, Nick and everyone else here has been wonderful. They've supported me through my journey of going through that surgery. I missed a lot of work. I've continued to have to miss some time on and off for all my surgeries, yep. but I did get the surgery um, and it has been very beneficial to me. I don't have any cancer risks right now. I'm cancer free. So it's been very good for me. The process of it all is you go through double mastectomy and you either choose reconstruction or you don't. So everybody has their own thing. Some women will choose not to do reconstruction. It's up to them totally. Yeah. Um, I did go ahead and do my reconstruction and it just gives you space in between. So you pretty much go and do a double mastectomy and a few months later you get reconstruction yep. and follow yep. up with your doctor for all your normal exams. Yeah. The only difference is you change from doing mammograms to doing just breast MRIs and PET CTs once you've had a double mastectomy. Okay, so will you explain to us, right, just to better educate us, right? Um, just because you have the double mastectomy doesn't mean you're done. So, no. you know, how often, you know, are they saying that you need to go back to make sure that you're continuously staying up on top of this? So currently I go twice a year, so okay. it's every six months, okay. um, is what you do for usually about the first two to three years, just to maintain your <clears throat> cancer free and make sure that there's no risk involved. Um, once you've hit two to three years, depending on your doctor, you will go ahead and switch to an every like year plan. So it's just once a year. So instead of going every six months, you'll just go once a year yeah. to get checked. Yeah. You know, my wife just went through, you know, the same thing, obviously, because her sister, you know, I believe she was 40 or 41 at the time, right? Mm -hmm. um, was diagnosed with breast cancer. Um, so since then, you know, she's required or not really required, but required by me, <laughs> you know, to go in at least every six months. So she just had hers done, what, a couple of weeks ago, I think it was. Um, and it's a scary thing, right? And I think, you know, from a husband standpoint, uh, you know, it, it, it just in my situation, right? It, it's just, I think what, what my wife was looking for is just 
you know, there's a lot of nerves. There was a lot of fear, right? The It's the fear of the unknown. But at the end of the day, if you're taking the necessary steps, if you're staying on top of your uh, exams, um, then, you know, there's a lot of uh, ways to beat it, right? Uh, but, you know, having a, a huge support system is major right in, in, in regards to this and and every woman needs that support whether it's you know through family whether it's through their spouse um, and it's just being very open um, and not that we have to have the answers to everything but it's just you know more or less for my wife it's just being there right um, and you know we I have three daughters too so this is something that is just really hits home you know because at the end of the day you know, it's, we're going to encourage them at a young age, no matter what, you know, to make sure that you're, you know, being consistent with your checkups and just taking the necessary precautions. Um, you know, we're just losing too many wonderful women in this world to, to, to this, to this beast. Right. And I think all of us are sick of it. Um, you know, we're tired of it, you know, and, and, you know, there are some healthy tips and, you know, there's an infographic that we'll release that will kind of go through some healthy tips, um, you know, that we got from, um, you know, a, a website that will talk about, you know, different, uh, no, one, knowing your family history, but nutrition, screening, uh, you know, watching your weight, physical activity, alcohol, uh, superfoods, and then it will kind of cover some of the symptoms that, you know, you can be looking for. But whether you have the symptoms or don't have the system, the symptoms, it's just necessary for you to go and get yourself, you know, checked out, right? Yes, 100%. I mean, it's super important. Um, you know, at, at the end of the day, um, you know, <laughs> this is really not about age and elite. It's about the women and some men, but it, 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 it rarely develops in men, but I, you know, I would hate to just not focus on the men too, because there are some cases, right. But women are 200 more times likely than a man, uh, to, to develop breast cancer. But I have also known some men, you know, that have, have had it as well, you know? So, um, if it's a gene, then obviously, you know, as a man and a woman, you want to make sure you're taking those precautions. Um, but knowing the statistics and understanding that there are resources out there, um, you know, available to every woman um, is important to know. And, you know, having a good support system behind you is going to make that process a lot easier. Wouldn't you agree? Yes, 100%. So that being said, um, what I would like to do is just kind of take a few minutes or take a step back for a minute. And in the comments below, whether you're watching this on YouTube, uh, Instagram, Facebook, or even LinkedIn, um, this isn't so much about focusing on the crap, but let's focus on the individuals and honor the uh, men and women who have lost their lives uh, to this uh, gorilla, right? A monster. Um, but also let's acknowledge the cancer survivors that have gone through this because they're the real heroes, right? The ones that have lost their life, the ones that are continually battling through this, right? They're the ones, um, they're the reason why, you know, we do these things, right? And uh, they deserve all the acknowledgement and credit. And, um, you know, it's, it's, again, it's something that hits very, very close to home and, um, you know, we hope that you guys are just as passionate about this. So let's get this video out there. Um, you know, let's sh reshare it. Um, let's bring awareness not to what we're trying to accomplish here as a company because none of that crap matters. But it's let's bring awareness to the men and women, uh, especially the women that are that are out there. Um, this is something that is super serious. And if we take the proper steps, um, you know, we can dramatically decrease the amount of cases that are out there, right? Uh, right now, the estimate is 2.8 million estimated amount of breast cancer survivors. You know, let's have this number change to, you know, 3.8 million over the next year. And the only way that we're going to do that is if you share this video, uh, tag somebody or give a shout out or, um, you know, whatnot to uh, someone who has either lost their life and or um, to the survivors or uh, people, women that are continually 
battling because you guys are the ones that matter. And so um, that being said, I appreciate you guys taking the time just to kind of uh, meet with us in regards to this. I know it's a little off topic in regards to what we normally do, but I just kind of felt it heavy on my heart just to you know make sure that we bring awareness to this because of not only the direct effect that we've had you know in here, um, but um, this is just something that is you know a lot of people are dealing with. So um, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to reach out to us at support at agentelite.com. You can also visit our website at www.agentelite.com. And also we will be creating an infographic with some of these statistics um, you know, to be sharing with you individuals. So if you guys are interested in having that, um, you know, reach out to us, you know, we'll shoot it out to you. And, um, you know, I think it would be good, especially over this month that maybe you even attach this infographic and it won't be branded to us. It won't be branded to agent elite. It'll just be a simple form that you guys could uh, print out and make sure that you're handing out to uh, each one of your clients. Um, again, the more awareness we bring the better chance we are going to have at fighting this and putting an end to um, this breast cancer. Thank you very much. We'll see you next time.